Welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create amazing Lottie animations without using Adobe After Effects. Yes, you heard me right, without using Adobe After Effects. So if you're not aware of Lottie files or Lottie animations, just head towards LottieFiles.com and scroll down and you'll be able to see some awesome animations. These are created by these awesome designers and animators which you can use it for free on your projects and this would work on native iOS, native Android or a web app or website so pretty much works anywhere and these are created using Adobe After Effects so Adobe After Effects is an awesome software trust me it has got a hell lot of features and that is what makes it confusing so if you look at this this is the interface of uh, Adobe After Effects and for a beginner, in fact, in my case itself, for the first time when I had a look at this, it looked so complicated to me that I hesitated to use it. And to create Lottie animations in this, you need to animate on this and then use a plugin, then export it. So that's a hell lot of process. And even if you ask me, 95%, in fact, more than 95% of the features that are available on After Effects are not supported on Lottie files. So for a beginner or anyone who just wants to create uh, animations for Lottie files, uh, I feel it's not really necessary to learn the software. And that is why Haiku, a company, has come into picture. So if you go to haikuforteams.com, they have a couple of products here. The one that we're going to look at is called as Haiku Animator creating engaging animations for iOS, Android or web app. So it's a similar concept to the Lottie files itself. So click on get started and you can see it's available both for Mac and Windows, which is cool. And if you go down, this is the interface, uh, which looks pretty simple. So you can see these awesome animations can be created. So just go ahead and install it. So I've already installed it and this is how it looks. They have got a default sample project here. So let's open that up. And this is the sample project. You have your timeline here, you have your assets here, and that is pretty much about the workspace. And to play it, you just have to click on this play button here. And there you go. This is a sample animation that they have showed here. So you can create pretty much any kind of a 2D animation here. So let's go ahead and start a new project to see how it works. So I click on new project and I would call this as loading animations because I was thinking of creating a loading animation for which I already have my assets ready. So here we have a new project and this is your canvas and you have your timeline here and on the left we have three options which say Sketch, Figma and Illustrator. So these are the three platforms from where you can import your assets. So Lottie works on vector animations and that is why we have these vector tools here. So let's go for Figma and if I click on that basically ask me for the project URL. So if I head towards Figma here, I already created a project and it has a loading cursive text written here. So this I created using a vector path using the vector tool here. It wasn't easy to create. So if you could see here, I had a couple of iterations and I ended up with this one. So it actually doesn't look really great, uh, but for the tutorial purpose, let's go ahead with this. So what I was thinking was uh, have an animation where it basically writes this letter by letter. So letter by letter animates in. So that is what is my expectation. So I have a path here and I also have a dot, which is not a part of a path, but just a fill shape. So these are the two assets that are present here. So once you've created the assets that you need for the animation, just go to share and say copy link and come back here and just give the link here, say import. So this is the second time I'm doing it. That is why it didn't ask me any permission. But if you do it for the first time, uh, you would actually come to a screen like this where it asks you for uh, authorization. You just have to click on allow access and that will bring up all the stuff that is there on your file. So if you can see here, I don't see the assets that are on the Figma file and that is because you need to make it exportable. So if I go back to Figma and I click on this one and the dot here, just make it exportable. That is click on the export button here. And that's it. You should be able to see the layers here. For that, just reload this. So I click on the reload button here. And there you go. I have my assets that I clicked on export. So in case you don't click on the export button or you don't make any layer exportable, you won't be able to see it here. So now that I have my loading, uh, let me just resize the frame here. I think this much should be enough for the loading that I'm creating. So I drag the loading here and I put it on the center. And maybe I'll try to resize this one too. So somewhere around here and somewhere around here. That looks good. And I put it back in the center. 
And one more thing that I have to place is the dot. So I drag it into the frame and I'll try to align it exactly with the letter I here. I think now it looks good. So now that we have all our assets, let's start animating it. So once you look at the timeline here, you can see that I have the dot, I have the loading. This is the path and this is the, you know, the dot. So make sure that you rename your assets on Figma so that it comes with the same layer names here. That will make it easy to animate. So once I have the loading path and the dot here, I want basically uh, the animation to load or write this letter by letter. So the first frame, you don't want this dot here. So I make the dots opacity to zero. So the dot is gone. So these are the basic properties here. If you need the extra properties, just go to the add option here and go to path or different things that you want to add. So if I go to loading, you have something called as a stroke dash array. I just click on that and that will add up the property. And one more thing I want to add is the stroke dash offset. So I have added two properties here. So this is nothing but if you go to Figma, you will be able to see a property called as if you go to more options here, the dashes and the dash gap. So that is nothing but the dash array and the dash offset here. So I want to make sure that uh, the dash with one dash, it forms this whole loading. So what I mean by that is if I give a value as 100, you can see this loading path is being created by multiple dashes here. So I want with the single dash to complete the whole thing. So keep trying. So I go for 500. So almost half of the path is in the picture. If I go for 1000, I think that should make it visible. Yes, the complete thing is visible. So let's try 900. Still visible. If I go for 800, you can see it's only till here. So let's go for 900 itself. And now that we have the whole path created with one single dash, a dash offset means the gap between the dashes. So in the first frame, I don't want the first dash itself. So it should be totally invisible. So the same value, you can just put it here and that will make the whole thing invisible or out of picture. So there's a gap of uh, 900 in the first uh, dash itself. That is why it's not visible. So the first frame looks good. It's totally empty. And now I'll head towards the one second mark here, which is uh, here. So you can also go for frames or seconds. So you just tap on this and it'll toggle to frames or seconds. I like to work in time and seconds. So I'll go to seconds and I'll click on this one second mark here and just change the stroke dash offset to zero and that should make it visible. So there you go. We have it visible. And I also want this dot to be visible, which is nothing but the dot here. So make it one and there you go. We have it. And now let's just play it. So there you can see how simple it was to create this. But if you see the dot is being visible even before the letter I comes into picture. So let's just correct that. So if I move the timeline here, so let's say here you want the dot to come into picture. So just move this keyframe to this particular time here. And now if I play it, it's starting on the correct time, but it's taking time to load. And that is because your end frame is at the one mark, one second mark here. So I'll move this back to somewhere here when you reach the letter N. So this should be perfect. And now if I click on play here, you can see everything works smooth and perfect. And now I want it also to go back in the same way it comes into the picture. So what I'll do is I'll head towards the two second mark here. And then I'll give the same exact properties that were in the beginning of the frame. So this should be 900. And then I want the dot to basically fade away when it reaches the letter I. So here, yeah, here you want it to start fading out. So I'll give it the start frame as keyframe as one. So we have a keyframe added there. And once the letter is finished somewhere here, I'll make the opacity to zero. And there you go. I'll maybe increase it a little bit more. Yep. So now let's have a preview of this. So if I see here, you can see that how awesome and smooth it works. You can also change the easing options. If you right click on this, you can go towards the easing options and you can also edit the curve here. So you can give it something like this, something like this. 
and you can see the preview of the easing here and now let's see how that works so that was pretty fast i don't want that i wanted the previous ease in and ease out motion this looks cool so you can also edit those uh, curves and easing options okay so now that everything looks good the animation is pretty smooth and it looks cool so now what you got to do is the next step is you know uh, how to create the lottie files so for that just go to the project and you have export option here which allows you to export in four formats, which is GIF, medium quality, GIF, high quality, and a video and a Lotte file. So let's go for Lotte. And let me just save this on my desktop. I'll call this loading animations. Okay, cool. So I just save it. And if I see my file explorer or the finder, here you have a JSON file, which is completely text. And that is how Lotte works. And now what you gotta do is go back to the Lotte files and on the top just go to preview and just drop in your uh, json file there so i just drop it there and that will load up your json file so there you go you have your animation right on lotte so you can also edit it and publish it so if you go to handoff lotte has an inbuilt editor which helps you change the color and all that stuff so that is how it works and you can copy this, you can use it on your web, Android and iOS, all the code will be available here. That is how you do it on Lotte, you can actually publish it also and give it to the public for free. And one more thing that we can do here is export it as a GIF. So if I click on GIF and I would say loading animation GIF, okay, just save it. So let's try something different with this and if you can see here that should create a GIF for you, there you go. So let's actually use this on Figma and see how we can use it. And here is a demo file by Figma that you get once you open your account on Figma. So this is a demo file here. We have some login screens and we have the home screen here. So let's add an intermediate screen which does a loading. So if I duplicate this and let me just remove all this content here. And now let's bring in our animation. So there you go i bring the gif animation here so let's center line it and to see a preview of it just go to this fill here and if you move the timeline here you can get the preview what you want to see there so this one looks good and now what i'll do is uh, on click on this one i'll create a intermediate screen for loading here so let's see how that looks uh, once i go to prototype mode i just create a link to this let's say on tap navigate to okay and maybe the animation should be instant or smart animate anything would work let's try dissolve here and for this one the trigger would be for the form or the artboard put it to the next one and say delay so after delay of let's say some three seconds and dissolve or smart animate anything would work so once I do that, let's go to the prototype mode here. So I click on login and there you go. You have your loading animation and that just dissolves into your home screen. Wow, wasn't that loading animation so easy to create on Haiku? Do give it a check and mention the link of the software in the description below. Also looking at this, I get an idea to create a loading animation for lazy loading. But that'll be another video, so stay tuned for the next video too. I believe that'll be interesting too. So that's it for this video, guys. And as always, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Thanks for watching.